Full-time RV living is not for everyone. Here are the top six reasons why people have quit. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And if you're thinking about full-time RV living, you might have some fear to push past. Paul and I have been full-timing for two years, and we meet people who aren't so much liking it. Now, we don't meet a lot, but we do hear of why people quit, and we thought it would be helpful to you if we did a video of the top six reasons why people quit this life. Like Liz said, this life is not for everyone. There are challenges, just like every other thing in life. Let's talk about it. So we met a couple in Oregon last summer, and one of the first things they said was, we're thinking about quitting. And we said, oh, well, how long have you been full-time RV living? And you know what they said? Three months. It was three weeks. Three weeks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> three weeks. So number six, some people don't give it enough time. Do not try and make this decision at three weeks. You definitely want to give it more time. And one thing that I think would help would be once you make this decision to full-time RV live, give it six months before you make the decision again. Kind of what it seemed like was happening with them and with other people is they revisit that decision every day. There was a bit of, oh my God, what have we done? You know, we need to get- They had sold we everything. Need to, we need to unwind this mess. <laughs> Commit to it. Commit to it for at least six months. Because you'll make yourself crazy if you decide every day, am I gonna do it or not? Yeah. You can't be on quicksand like that. It, it will swallow you up. This couple in particular, they had come from Florida to Oregon. In three weeks. In three weeks. That's traveling fast, folks. That's, that's, <laughs> that's moving. And we meet people like that who, who travel yeah, really fast. Yeah. And I think that would make you hate this life. Yeah. They're treating it more like a vacation than a lifestyle. You just have to remember that this is your lifestyle now. You're not in a hurry to get anywhere. And so take your time, see the areas that you're passing through. That's what makes this life so special. One of the many things that makes this life so special. That's right. And you'll wear yourself out if you're setting up and breaking camp every day or two. Yeah. If you're staying at Walmarts, so you're not even getting the, the enjoyment of this life or of your rig. We, we kind of got into that when we went from, from Washington to South Dakota. We were, doing, we were on a bonsai run to, to South Dakota, and by the time we got there, we'd worn ourselves out. We were kind of hating this life. Yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, we, we decided that we needed to, to do the trip fast, and there was no particular reason for that. We just had that in our brains. <laughs> he said, let's just do it really quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we learned. I'm sure it is, yeah. I'm sure I played a big role in that, yeah, yeah. We but, learned. But I also, when we got to Heart Ranch in, in South Dakota and saw how nice it was, we said, you know what, let's stay here for a while. So we extended and, and then slowed the pace way down even after that. We, we uh, realized the mistake that we'd made. Made a big difference. Sometimes we meet couples where one person is driving the bus on the idea and the other person is maybe not totally on board. Yeah. If you're going to do this, and I'm sure you think, well, I'm really in it, and my partner, well, maybe once I get him or her out here, she'll fall in love with it. Well, that's wishful thinking, and, and if that person is not committed before you, before you hit the road... You're doomed to fail. <laughs> you really are. Yeah. I mean, you might be one of the lucky ones where that person does fall in love with it, but if they're not on board in the beginning, if they're not as excited as you yeah. are... Yeah. Be honest with each other and be honest with yourself about this. If you're not committed in the beginning, your chances of doing this full time are, are not very good. The next one is make sure you get the right rig. We talked about this in the other video, but I was either going to get a fifth wheel or quit this life. It was down to that. I had decided it was one of those two things. And Right, so if you come out here on the road and you decide you don't like it, be open to the fact that is it the rig? Because I started out full time RV living in a camper van, and I realized do I hate do I hate the life or do I hate the van? It turned out to be the van. I didn't really hate the van; it just wasn't suitable for me. Similar thing for me. I bought a travel trailer, a 24 foot travel trailer, and it was just too small. It seemed big enough when I bought it, but but 
when you're when that's your living space and that's all you've got it the walls start closing in on you right so just be open to that you could also buy too big where every time you travel it's so stressful because you've got right. this big thing or you can't fit into places that you want to go yeah. yeah that's our situation right now we have a 35 foot um, fifth wheel and it's right on that for me it's the it's right on that line where it's almost too big because there are times when when uh, pulling into a space gets very stressful and the number two reason why people quit full-time RV living is family reasons like obligations right mm -hmm. so if you're if you have elderly parents you might need to take care of them we met people that were quitting this life because um, their daughter gave birth to a child that was special needs and oh there was someone else we met the daughter had twins and needed help mm -hmm. so she was going to go take care of her you know and help with the babies yeah, there's somebody in the A-team that uh, has mentioned in the comments that, that she's taking care of her 90-year-old uh, mother, I think, mm -hmm. or father, I can't remember which. But yeah, there are reasons that you can't do this because of obligations, is, is the point. Right, and so maybe that's something where you can do it part-time, you know, around that, or get some help and, you know, get away. There might be a way to work around that. Mm -hmm. The number one reason why people would quit this life or never even come into this life is health and mobility. You have to have a certain level of, of fitness and mobility to be able to do this life. It's very physical. Uh, set up and break down um, is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to be able to, you know, pick up hoses. Uh, you need to be able to climb a couple stairs. No matter yeah, what kind of rig yeah. you have, there's going to be steps to get yeah. in. I go up on the roof every time we, we um, break down and set up to, to do some stuff up there. To check things or yeah. to do something with an antenna. Yep. The reality is you have to be somewhat physically fit to do this life and be comfortable at it. It's true. If you have your health, you can have, you know the whole world in your hands. If you don't have your health, then you know the options are so limited. And we yeah. hear from people, I wish we could join you, Liz and Paul. Unfortunately, our health won't let us. And this video, you know, is a reminder, if you have your health and, and you're free, come on out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate, I guess, good genes. Um, and you take care of yourself. I, yeah, I was a lifelong runner. I, I stopped running a few years back, but I ran marathons for 30 plus years. I took up cycling, so that helps. Yeah, and some people, you know, have had misfortunes, whether it's been car wrecks or yeah, illnesses. Yeah. I mean, our hearts go out for you. I mean, we know that life can turn on a dime. Every day, we're grateful that we have our health and we can be here. We know that that can change like that. Yeah, sure yeah, can. You know. I mean, you had the, the bike accident that luckily, you know, other than some road rash and a broken nose, uh, you came away but, yeah. But you just lost a friend. Yes, I did. I I just lost a good friend. Um, he had a, a a fall. It wasn't even that big of a fall. He was paralyzed from the neck down. They did a surgery, and um, he seemed to be doing well. And then his body, for whatever reason, just shut down, and uh, so he's gone. He was, yeah. We were the same age, and and uh, lifelong friend. Yeah, may he rest in peace. Whew. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, we're just grateful to be here, and we hope you can join us, and we hope this video helps you make that decision. Live well. Mm -hmm. We're all in this <laughs> together. <laughs> we're all in this soup together. Let us know in the comments if there's any reasons uh, that we've missed as far as why people would stop living this life. I guess other than they just don't like it. We didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's a bonus one. Some people just don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't like the... All the, the travel, adventure, all and All the fun. travel and the uncertainty, you know. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, stuff happens out here. You know, you get a blowout or a flat tire or... You know, there all kinds of things can go wrong when you're traveling. If you want the predictable, the same day, everything, this is not going to be the life. Your life. You don't no. want this life. Yeah. 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 This is a lot of adventure and it may be too much adventure, too much uncertainty. And we get that too. So yeah. we actually have a video that you can watch called The Downsides of RV Living. And we'll put a link to it right here. Yeah. See you in the next one. See you next time. And I won again. <laughs> I quit.